My son, do not forget my teaching. Keep my commands in your heart, for they will prolong your life many years and bring you peace and prosperity. Let love and faithfulness never leave you. Bind them around your neck. Write them on the tablet of your heart. Then you will win favor and a good name in the sight of God and man. Trust in the Lord with all of your heart and lean not on your own understanding. In all your ways, submit to him and he will make your path straight. Do not be wise in your own eyes. Fear the Lord and shun evil. This will bring health to your body and nourishment to your bones. Well, if you're driving down the road and there's potholes and it's dangerous and there's not a sign like this, uh, it's a problem. Go ahead and put that, that image up there. If, it's not, if, you, if you're driving down a road like this and there's not a sign, it's a problem. And we're glad, we're thrilled, we're thankful for, for guideposts along the road when they show us the right way to go or protect us from the wrong way. And if we're heading down the road and there's not a guardrail like this one. I mean, if it's a windy road and it's dangerous and you're not quite sure if you get close to the edge, what's going to happen to you? Now, we're thankful for guideposts. We're thankful for guardrails. They show us where to go, kind of how to stay and keep ourselves safe on the road. And, and in our personal lives, you know, often we, you, you might think, man, wouldn't it be great as I just go through life and my relationships and my finances and how I use my words and every part of my daily life, what if there were guideposts and guardrails that gave me wisdom for how to live my life? And here's the good news. There are. The whole Bible is filled with God's wisdom, but kind of right in the middle of the Bible, this book of Proverbs particularly gives us these guideposts, these guardrails, this wisdom for all of our life. And there's a lot to be said about relationships in the book of Proverbs. So we're in the six-week series, just in week two, of really thinking about what is it that, that God teaches us. Because here's the thing, you can, know God's, you can know God's knowledge and his insight and what to do and not live it out. You grow in wisdom when you know what God wants you to do and you actually apply it. Wisdom is taking what you know is right and actually doing it. Folly is taking what you know is right and not doing it, not applying it. So wisdom is the outworking of God's knowledge, of God's truth, and he gives it to us in a way that will guide our lives. So let me ask you a fundamental question, and I want you just in your own mind to answer this question. Here's the question. Do I believe God is smarter than me? I mean, do I believe that God is smarter than me? And even if you're not a Christian, if you're not a, not a believer in God, do you believe if there is a God who made everything and who runs the universe, do, would you believe that that God, if there is such a God, is smarter than you? And, and our, our quick response is, of course I believe God is smarter than me, but do I really believe that? Do I live like I believe God is smarter than me? Or do I, when God says, this is the right way to live, and I go, but I kind of feel like doing this, do I do it my way? And every time I do it my way, guess what? Guess who's not living like they think God is smarter than them? Me, because I'm doing it my way. Do I really? And, and so I was thinking about this, and my mind thinks in pictures. If you've been around Shoreline at all, I think in pictures and props and visuals, and I'm just kind of, that's the way my brain works. So I started getting this picture of, first, God's wisdom and God's able, ability to kind of run the universe. So I thought about our solar system. I want you in your mind to try to picture our solar system. If you can't picture it, just look up on the screen. Okay, so, so you know, our solar system functions day in and day out with this order, with, with our sun and these planets moving around it. And so I, I was thinking about this. I'm not, I'm not a scientist, I'm a pastor. So I was thinking, you know, how fast I know that the, sun, that the sun is in the center of our solar system and that our planet, the Earth, is moving, is, you know, is flying, I mean, think about this, flying through space, our planet, around the sun. But so I did a little research. How fast is this Earth that we're on right now? How fast is it flying through space around the sun? Here's the answer. 67,000 miles an hour. 67,000 miles an hour. Now, somebody recently broke the, the two-hour barrier for a marathon, but they weren't running 67,000 miles an hour. All right? Our planet is flying. And so if you add that up, our planet is moving around the sun about 1.6 million miles a day. And it takes 365 days to get one time around the sun. That's how huge that orbit is. Year after year after year. And while our planet's flying through space, it's on an axis turning perfectly 
every 24 hours while it's flying 67,000 miles an hour around the sun. But it's just, it just happened randomly. <laughs> I don't think so. I mean, so, so, so God who made and sustains all of this is wise beyond description. And so I was picturing, you know, I was picturing sort of a person who's thinking, well, I'm smarter than God. I don't, I don't believe what God says. I don't have to believe in the Bible. And I was picturing that person's desk. And this is the picture I came up with. Okay, there, here's their desk. There's their computer. They've got, you know, and, and they're sitting on this planet that God made, flying around the sun that God made, and with, they, they can't even keep their desk organized. They, they, they lose their phone occasionally. Anybody? I can't find my keys. I can't, I mean, just little stuff. And the God who made everything, who's wiser? So the question today is simply this. Who will we trust? My own abilities or God's? Now, God gives us a mind to think. It's a beautiful thing. But ultimately, the question is, will we trust that God is wiser, God is smarter than me and than you? So turn in your Bibles to Proverbs chapter 2. We're going to walk through the whole second chapter of Proverbs today. And we're going to also kind of sprinkle a little bit of third Proverbs as we walk through it. Uh, uh, Proverbs chapter 3, verses 5 to 8 particularly. But in Proverbs chapter 2, verse 1, we learn this, that we begin seeking wisdom, not just hoping we get it. We begin by seeking wisdom. Wisdom doesn't just come to us. It's not like, hey, another year passed and, oh, I'm wiser. It doesn't work that way. You can be a young, wise person and an old fool. And you can be a young fool and an old, wise person. Do we seek after wisdom? Listen to what God's word says in Proverbs chapter 2, verse 1. My son, and I pointed out last week that son is a generic term. That means my child. My child, if you accept my words and store up my commands, that's active, store up my commands within you, turning your ear to wisdom, you're straining for it, and applying your heart to understanding. Indeed, if you call out for insight, I need insight, and cry aloud for understanding, God, give me your understanding. If you look for it as for silver, and search for it as for hidden treasure. Does that sound passive to anybody? No. We strive for wisdom. We seek after wisdom. If I told you that we took a million dollars in cash and buried it somewhere on the Shoreline campus, well, you just said to stay out of the flower beds and stay out of the gardens. (laughs) I guarantee you, even if you don't need the money, you'd be walking around going, where would it have been? You'd be looking for it. He says, if you search for it as for a hidden treasure. Wisdom is something we seek after, we strive for. And the good news is God gives it right here in his word. And and so I want to encourage you to, to take some steps forward in seeking after wisdom. Don't be passive, be active. And the best way to do that is this. And it's not that complicated. Open this book every day. Or open your Bible app every day. And read this book or listen to the words of this book. In the ancient world, most people were actually listening to God's word. Today, in a lot of parts of the world, there's people that don't read. But Sherry and I are part of an organization. And we provide treasures. And through our church, we give treasures, these solar-powered audio Bibles in over 6,000 languages for people who can't read, but they listen to God's word. So open God's word, read it, listen to it, fill your mind, fill your heart, let your life be shaped by God's word. Make that a discipline in your life. Memorize passages. Commit Bible passages to memory. That's not just for kids in Sunday school. If there's a passage that strikes you, that encourages you, that convicts your socks off, commit it to memory. So when the moment comes, you can just bring that scripture up and run through it and run through it in your heart and in your mind. Meditate on scripture. That means just kind of think about the words and the truth over and over and over. Meditation is not a bad thing if we're meditating on the right things. It's just reflecting again and again on the truth of God's word. Talk about scripture with other people. Talk about the wisdom of God's word. What are you learning from God's word? What's God teaching you? And learn from each other. Find a wisdom mentor. I've got two of them. Carl Overbeek and Paul Cedar. They're both retired pastors who I asked, will you pour into my life and teach me what you've learned in life? They're incredibly wise, godly men. And I send them two or three questions, and then we get on the phone, and we spend about an hour, and they just pour out wisdom to me. There's things I would never know, except for I ask people way more wise than I am. You can do that. It's not complicated. Find a wisdom mentor in your life. Write down thoughts of wisdom that strike you. Ask your friends about what they see, uh, what, how, they, how they see wisdom growing in their life, or how they see themselves wandering from wisdom. And I want to encourage you, if you're not doing it already, uh, to be st- our, our daily reading guide that we have at Shoreline, which is in our Shoreline app, on our website, and in your bulletin every single week, 
gives, gives seven days of reading for next Sunday. And this next, this whole series of six weeks, it's all the book of Proverbs. We're just going through Proverbs over and over and over. But if you want to go deeper at the, at the, uh, over at the Connection Center over here, we've got a little two-page introduction to the book of Proverbs. Pick that up, whoever you are, pick that up if you want to just get a perspective on Proverbs. But then also, we have kind of more of a devotional book on Proverbs by Timothy Keller, great pastor from the New York area. And then also, the, the NIVAC commentary series. This is a commentary that starts in the ancient world. Does the ancient context, how do you translate into the modern day world, and what's it mean for us today? A little bit more academic, but it's something that a, that a, that a person who loves to learn could learn from. Uh, this this right here is provided back there for free. These, you get to pay what we paid for them so we can break even. That's the plan. But those are in the Connection Center. Go deeper. Dig into God's word. One thing I also want to point out about the book of Proverbs. Uh, all of the Bible, you have to read the Bible in the way it's written. And Proverbs are designed to be wisdom that shows you that generally speaking, when you live your life this, is, this way, this is what happens. It's not a book of absolute promises. Some people want to take every line of Proverbs and say, oh, it says this, therefore this will happen. It's meant to be general wisdom that shows when you walk on a path like this, this is generally where you end up. So some people will take a proverb that says, says um, raise up a child in the way that they should go, and when they grow old, they will not depart from it. And they say, oh, if I bring my kids to church, they have to become a Christian. It says it right there in the Bible. Well, that's not what it's saying. It's saying, raise up a child in the ways of the Lord, in the wisdom of the Lord, and when they grow old, they will not depart from most. If you want your kid to have the best chance of understanding the wisdom of God and living in the ways of God, raise them up in the ways of God. Are you guaranteed that if you bring a kid to church and do your best, they will all turn out to be perfect and all that? Well, no, we're not guaranteed of that. It's, it's a guideline for living that brings the wisdom of God. And so, and so just as you read Proverbs, it, it's, it's God's wisdom for how to live our lives in the best way. And he says, and this is the kind of direction it takes you. But it's not, if you hold, if you want to say every verse, it's guaranteed to turn out the way it says, then you're going to find yourself in trouble because that's not what, you know, if somebody says, listen, Proverbs says if I live as a wise person, I'll have prosperity and a healthy life. So I'm going to have all the money I need all the time and I'll never be sick. Well, that's not what it says. It's saying walk in wisdom and, and that, that leads to health, that leads to prosperity, but it's not, it's not a one-for-one one guarantee. So read the Bible in the context that it's given to you, all right? Look with me at Proverbs chapter three, verse eight. And this is kind of a refrain I wanna come back to in our message because it really gets to the heart of what we're talking about today. And it says, trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not on your own understanding. In all of your ways, submit to him. And he will make your paths straight. Do not be wise in your own eyes. Fear the Lord and shun evil. Let's have deep reverence for God and be profoundly aware that to walk out of his way is to walk out of bounds. It's like going through the guardrail. It's dangerous. It's trouble. This will bring health to your body and nourishment to your bones. It almost sounds like Proverbs is saying we should believe that God is wiser than us. It's almost saying that Proverbs is saying that 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 if we walk in the way of wisdom, it might challenge how we see things. Let me tell you a story about a person who had the courage to walk in wisdom. Her name's Mindy. And Mindy was in her 20s, a young, committed, godly young woman, just committed to Jesus passionately. She started dating a guy and fell in love with a guy who not only was not a Christian, who was absolutely pushing back against the Christian faith and resisting the Christian faith. So she's going this way with her faith, and this guy's going this way, but she's falling in love with him. Anybody see a problem? And, and so this is what's happening. So I watch her, and I knew, I knew Mindy, so I'm watching her, and I just said to her, Mindy, I, I tried to speak wisdom to her. I said, Mindy, I think you're heading for big trouble. I said, why are you dating a guy that you're passionate about Jesus, trying to follow Jesus with all your heart, soul, mind, and strength, and this person is strongly, passionately resisting Jesus? And she decided to break off the relationship, even though she felt like she was deeply in love with him. She broke off the relationship. And this guy, who also loved her, so I, need to, now I guess I need to dig more into the Christianity thing. Started to study and learn and eventually came to the point where he gave his heart to Jesus. They started dating again. They got married. They have six kids. Those six kids are my nieces and nephews. You told your younger brother's girlfriend she shouldn't be dating him? Yes, I did. I gave her wisdom. She had to decide... The Bible talks about these things. We're talking relationships, right? Wisdom for relationships. And so, and, and you know what? She praises God for that. He praises God for that. And their kids praise God for that. They really do. 
And my brother, my brother is now not only a school teacher down in Southern California doing all he can to, to shine the light of Jesus in a, in a context that's very tricky and difficult, but also he's a worship leader in a, in a local church. And he loves Jesus passionately. I, I thank God that Mindy trusted in the Lord with all her heart and leaned not on her own understanding. That all of her ways she submitted to God and God made her path straight. It takes courage to walk in wisdom, but it's transformational in every part of our lives. If we seek wisdom, God does many things we can't do on our own. If we will seek God's wisdom and walk in his wisdom and learn his wisdom and seek to follow his wisdom, things will happen in our lives that wouldn't happen on our own. Look with me at Proverbs chapter two, verse five. The Proverbs goes on and says, then you will understand the fear of the Lord, that awe and reverence of God, and find knowledge of God, for the Lord gives wisdom. From his mouth come knowledge and understanding. He holds success in store for the upright. He is a shield to those whose walk is blameless, for he guards the course of the just and protects the way of his faithful. Now remember, Proverbs is giving a big picture of how life tends to work when we walk in the way of wisdom. Here's what, it, here's what it's saying. It's saying there's certain things that start to happen when you walk in wisdom that often don't happen when you're not walking in wisdom. So here's a question. Would you like, would you personally like any of these four things? Would you like this in your life? Would you like knowledge? Greater, you know, greater knowledge. Would you like understanding of how things work and the best way to live your life? Would you like knowledge, understanding? Would you like success? And would you like protection? Because what this passage is saying is when you seek after wisdom, when you strive for it like silver, when you want it more than hidden treasure, when you, when you gather wisdom, and then when you walk in the way of wisdom, because you can have knowledge and not apply it, and you're not walking in wisdom. When you live in that knowledge and you apply it to your life day after day, it says the kind of life that tends to result out of that is a life filled with knowledge, understanding, success, and God's protection. That, that's, that's kind of the normal course that you set yourself on when you walk in the ways of wisdom. And so let's go back to the Proverbs 3 passage again. Trust in the Lord with all your heart. Lean not on your own understanding. It doesn't mean don't use your brain. But it means if what your brain's coming up with and what God's brain's coming up with are slightly different, go with God's version. right? Go with God's wisdom. In all your ways, submit to him. My way, his way. God, I'm going to do it your way. In all your ways, submit to him, and he will make your paths straight. Do not be wise in your own eyes. Fear the Lord and shun evil. This will bring health to your body and nourishment to your bones. Let me tell you another story of someone having the courage to follow God's wisdom. Uh, Walt showed up here at Shoreline on a Sunday afternoon to a meeting in the Parkside room over here. He was with his wife, Liz. Walt was a business leader, a vice president in his company just down Garden Road here a little bit, coming to Shoreline Church. Vice president on his way to kind of the next step in his corporate life enjoying life, things going well, came to an evening here at Shoreland and we talked about Organic Outreach International, about launching this new ministry. And we were talking about the vision for it and we felt like Shoreline could be a place where we could actually help churches all around the globe. And he sat there through that whole casting vision for that ministry. He came up to me afterwards and he said, this is huge. This needs to happen. Shoreline can do this. We need to help churches all around the world do a better job of going out and sharing Jesus. He said, and so he said, this, this is, and I, he's telling, trying to convince me it's important. Sharon and I have been doing it for 30 years, right? And he's going, this is, I, I'm like, I agree, Walt. I didn't know his name. I said, you are, and I just, you know, I got to know him a little bit. And I said, he was so excited. I said, hey, do you want to grab lunch? I'd love to talk to you more about it. We went over to the airport here on the Wednesday. So a couple days later, we go to the airport for lunch. He shows up with a notebook with pages of, okay, so here's what you got to do. You got, if you want to go international and help churches international, you got to do this. And he's like laying out this game plan, which I didn't even have in my heart. I didn't know how to make it happen. He's like, you got to do this. And it's just page after page. I said, where'd you get all this? He said, I can't even sleep at night. I keep thinking about it. I just keep writing things down. I'm like, hmm, I'm wondering. Um, I say to myself. And so, so anyways, we met again, talked some more. The next time I met with him, he has pages more of stuff. And I said, I finally said to him, I said, Walt, is there any chance that God could be leading you to leave the business world? Take a substantial pay cut and serve Jesus by leading this ministry. Because I'm a pastor of a local church. You may not notice this, but I actually pastor a church. And so I'm, I said, I got a full time job. I said, but I need someone to partner and lead this thing. And he, he laughed. He said, oh. he said, no, 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 I guess here's ideas for you. This is not for me, you know? <laughs> and, and so then a little bit later, I met with him and his wife and talked some more. And um, 
And, fi I finally, and Walt's a numbers guy. So I said to Walt, I said, Walt, okay, like what percentage are you open to leaving your entire life and your, all that you planned for and all that you're doing and coming over and coming into ministry and running this thing? And he thought about it and he said, 25%. And I'm thinking, so you're saying there's a chance. Uh, so he says, 25%. And I think, okay, that's pretty good. It ain't nothing. Uh, and so we met again. Well, eventually he was up to 75%. And then we were holding one of our organic outreach events here at Shoreline. And the very first day, he walks over to me and he said, he just comes right next to me. He goes, we'll talk later. 100%. Trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not on your own understanding. In all your ways, acknowledge him and he will make your paths straight. I love stories of people who say, my way, my plan, God's way, God's plan. That, the point is not everyone should leave business and go into ministry. God wants tons of great godly people in business in every walk of life, education, everyone. My brother Jason's still a school teacher. He's also a worship leader. But, but Walt, so Walt Bennett now leads Organic Outreach International. And instead of reaching two or three or 4,000 churches, we're now equipping and training and influencing 43,000 churches and a group of 500 churches just asked Walt to design a plan for them to help influence all those 500 churches so they can go out with the love of Jesus more. When Shoreline Church said, we exist to help as many people as possible become totally committed to Jesus Christ, we had no idea how big that would be. But that, that's what happens when you trust in the Lord. Wisdom impacts everything in our life. If you don't believe it, ask Walt. His whole life has changed. But he would tell you it's changed for the better. It's just very, very different. Wisdom impacts everything in our life, in particular, every relationship. If you want to see your relationships transformed, walk in wisdom. It will change every relationship you have. In your work world, at school, with your friends, in social studies, with your family, with your children, with your parents, with your spouse, wherever you are, it, walking in the wisdom of God changes everything. And I love how Proverbs 2 continues in verse 9, where Proverbs says, now God's going to give us a warning that there can be people who are dangerous, there can be, in your relational world, there's people who will be damaging to your life and damaging to your faith. And it says there's two kinds of people in the world. There's men and women, and they can both be bad. Proverbs is an equal opportunity employer here, okay? So look with me at Proverbs 2.9. Then you will understand what is right and just and fair and every good path. This is getting on the right path. For wisdom will enter your heart. Knowledge will be pleasant to your soul. Discretion will protect you and understanding will guard you. Say, life will be great. But then Proverbs says, but wait a minute. In your relational world, there's some people that will be very damaging. Keep your guard up, all right? So look at verse 12. It starts with men. Wisdom will save you from the ways of wicked men, from men whose words are perverse, who have left the straight paths to walk in dark ways, who delight in doing wrong and rejoice in the perverseness of evil, whose paths are crooked and who are devious in their ways. Proverbs says, be careful who you align yourself with. If you can influence them, great. If they're influencing you and they're going the wrong way, whoa, be careful. But then Proverbs says, but it's not just men, it's also women. Look at verse 16. Wisdom will save you also from the adulterous woman, from the way wayward woman with her seductive words, who has left the partner of her youth and ignored the covenant she made before God. Not a covenant keeper, a covenant breaker. Surely her house leads down to death and her paths to the spirits of the dead. None who go to her return or attain the paths of of life. That sounds bad. Proverbs says in your relational world, have wisdom. Who are you around? How are they influencing you? When our boys were growing up, we told our boys, you can hang around with any kids from any background of life. Christian, non-Christian, good kids, not even, you can hang around as long as you're the influencer and not the one influenced. Christians need to be around people of every walk of life. We just don't need to be influenced in folly and to walk away from God because we're around people that are walking in the wrong direction. We have to have wisdom. There is trouble in this world, Proverbs tells us. Wisdom will help you make good choices and decisions. I mean, if you want to just know how to make decisions, how to live your life in every way possible, immerse yourself in the book of Proverbs. I shared last week, I go through Proverbs two or three times a year where I'll spend a month or two and just I'll be doing my regular Bible reading and I'll just kind of read Proverbs and let it fill my heart and my mind because again and again, God just resets the kind of the, the, the vision of what it looks like to live a, a wise life for his glory. So let's go back to the Proverbs 3 passage again. Proverbs 3, 8. So trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not on your own understanding. 
In all your ways, submit to him, and he will make your path straight. To not be wise in your own eyes, fear the Lord and shun evil. Turn from evil. This will bring health to your body and nourishment to your bones. Let me tell you another story of somebody who was willing to follow God's ways and not their own. A guy named Howie and his wife Linda. Howie and Linda Hugo felt called by God to start a church. And they were looking at all the different places they could start a church. And God led them to Monterey. From a human standpoint, Monterey is a tough area. It's extremely expensive. There's not a lot of, you know, hard to buy a building and make, you know, this is a warehouse. There used to be like racks of stuff. And this is not designed to be a church. But, you know, it's just, Monterey is a tough area. But they felt a call to leave where they were in a very comfortable setting with all their needs met and kind of the whole life kind of put together and start a church. That, how he felt a call to start a church that people actually wanted to go to. That people would say, I look forward to going to church. Church is fun. A church where you can invite someone who's never been to church and they're going to go, I may not agree with all that, but those are nice people and that's kind of, you know, yeah, I could do that again. You know, a different kind of church. They would still hold to the gospel and hold to the Bible without apology, but have their arms open to people right where they're at. Did Monterey need a church like that? Oh, you bet. So Howie and Linda, and with time, their seven kids, trusted in the Lord with all their heart and leaned not on their own understanding. In all their ways, they acknowledged the Lord, and he made their paths straight to Monterey for 15 years. God had that family invest in, in leading this church. I praise God. For someone like Howie who would follow the call of the Lord. And the times when the church had no money to pay the staff, and no, I mean, when there was points for sure, and I, I know the whole story, times where Shoreline was basically no, left, no money left. And Howie got on the phone and call their people at church, hey, if we don't have more money, we close the church. And the money showed up every time. And I'm so glad they hung in there following the Lord's ways and not their own. Because our ways are sometimes like, okay, that's enough, hang it up. This is, it's too hard. But God pressed them through all of that. In Proverbs, we see that there are consequences to our choices and our decisions for the good and for the bad. Howie and Linda Hugo make a choice to follow God's call here. The consequence is, voila, look around the room. Look what God's doing. Look at the churches around the world that are being impacted because one family was faithful to follow the Lord. And you don't even know the repercussions of following Jesus and being faithful. But Proverbs 2, 20 to 22, we'll continue on through chapter 2. It talks about the land and how there are certain ways you can behave that will bring the blessing of being in the land, certain ways that would cast you out of the land. We have to understand contextually, if you think, well, the land, oh, you may have a little piece of land, what's that matter? Oh, you don't understand. In the ancient world, for these people, the land was everything. That was their home, that was their identity, that was their inheritance, that was everything. And so Proverbs says, so that's, you know, the land means so much to these people. It says, thus you will walk in the ways of the good, and keep to the paths of the righteous. You're walking God's wise ways. For the upright will live in the land. There's a consequence. They get the blessing of the land. And the blameless will remain in it. But the wicked will be cut off from the land, and the unfaithful will be torn from it. Just kind of torn and tossed out. God says there's consequences to walking in wisdom and to walking in folly. And you know what? We all know that's true. Because when we walk in wisdom, things get better. And when we walk in foolishness, things get messy real fast. Or they stay fine for a while. We keep things hidden. It comes to service and boom, the bottom falls out. There's consequences for the good or for bad of walking in wisdom. So we can decide. We can decide I will trust in my insight, in my perspective, in my ability. Or I can trust in the Lord and his understanding. We can make a decision. I will trust in, in my abilities and my skills or I will trust in the Lord. Now, God gives us our abilities and our skills and we should use them. We should think well. But, but I'm saying when our ideas and God's ideas come into conflict, when God says, this is the way to live and I say, but I prefer this, the wise person says, I'll align my life with the will of God even when it's tough, even when it stretches me. So look with me at Proverbs chapter three, beginning in verse one this time. I want to read that same passage, but I want to start, I kind of ramp up from verse one and get up to verses five through eight. It says, my son, my child, do not forget my teaching, <clears throat> but keep my commands in your heart, for they will prolong your life many years and bring you peace and prosperity. Doesn't that sound good? They'll prolong your life many years and bring you peace and prosperity. Again, it's a general direction of life, not a promise that, okay, if I follow God's wisdom, I'll live to be 107. Although I just, walk, I just said hello to a gal who's 102, 
She was here with her son, and he was, we stopped and had a little chat as they were heading out of church this morning. They were here for first service. They will prolong your life many years and bring you peace and prosperity. Let love and faithfulness never leave you. It's such a beautiful picture. Bind them around your neck. Write them on the tablet of your heart and keep it close to your heart. Then you will win favor and a good name in the sight of God and in the sight of people. Trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not on your own understanding. In all your ways, submit to him and he will make your paths straight. Do not be wise in your own eyes. Fear the Lord and shun evil. This will bring health to your body and nourishment to your bones. One more story. We've had a series of dinners. Uh, we're shortly is coming to our 25-year anniversary, and we'll celebrate some more early next year, but we're kind of looking at the season of 25 years of ministry, all that God has done, looking at the next 25 years, seeing how we can serve Jesus for the next generation and have a church, have Shoreline here in Monterey doing what God's called us to do for generations to come till Jesus comes again. So we've been talking about that around the table, and we gave an invitation for a couple weeks to anybody who, who wanted to to come, and a group came last Sunday night, a group's coming tonight, and, we just, and I've been sharing about the last 25 years, the vision for the next 25 years, and then I've been actually, and I told people, if you could come to this, and then I'm going to ask you to pray about giving money above your regular giving to God's work for the next 25 years of Shoreline. And a lot of people said, sign me up, I want to talk about that. So at one of these dinners, um, sitting there at the table... And there's a woman at the table, and we're talking about just the, the I was given this challenge. And I say, I'm a pastor. I'm not, I wasn't trained in somebody to be a development guy or to raise money. But I, I said, I believe in what God's doing, and I believe that God will provide for all he wants us to do. So I shared the vision. I asked people to pray about giving. And this one woman, she says, can I share something? And I said, sure. And she said, well, here's what I do. She said, and she said, you can quote me on this. She said, when I'm praying about something where I know that God wants me to give financially, she says, I keep praying and thinking about what can I give, what can I give, and I keep kind of, kind of keep inching it up and inching it up, and she says, when I get to the point where the gift that I want to give, when I, I get to the point where the, the amount gets to the point where I say to myself, I feel like I'm going to throw up. She says, then I know I'm at the right number. <laughs> and you know what I said? I said, then I pray that you'll barf your guts out. <laughs> and it, it probably wasn't like a pastor thing to say. But that's really what I, she, she, she started it. No, she said, I, just, I said, I keep praying till I feel like I'm gonna throw up and I know I came. And here's what she said, because when I get to that point, that stretches my faith. She says, trust in the Lord, you know, trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not on your own understanding at all your ways, acknowledge him and he will make your paths straight. I praise God that Mindy took the way of wisdom and broke up with my brother. You know, I, I, I praise God that somebody would say, I'm going to pray till I feel like I, my stomach's going to turn upside down and inside out, but I'm going to take that step of faith. I praise God that, 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 that Howie and Linda Hugo said, we will follow God where he calls us to go. I praise God every time we get a chance to walk in faith. I, in this passage, one of the things that struck me, I, I put down, it's, I call it the big three Ps. And you actually see this in uh, verse two of Proverbs three. For they will prolong your life many years and bring you peace and prosperity. You know, walking in the way of wisdom is a way that leads to a prolonged life, to a peaceful life, to a prosperous life. It doesn't mean everything always goes our way, but walking in wisdom, is, it sets us on that kind of trajectory. <clears throat> and one of the most complex parts of our life is our relationships. <clears throat> our relational life is one of the most complex parts of our lives. And God speaks into every relationship. The next four weeks, we're going to dig into four different topics specifically about our relational life in four different areas. And we're going to say, God, teach us wisdom. So our relationships look like all you want them to look like. Let's pray together. Lord God, thank you for your wisdom. Thank you that you have given your word that is true and powerful and life-changing. Thank you, God, that you lead us as your children and that we can seek wisdom and cry out for wisdom. We, we can look for it like silver and search for it like hidden treasure. I pray we would be people that seek after wisdom in these coming weeks. We would immerse ourselves in the book of Proverbs. We will read your word. We will listen for your spirit. And Lord, when our ways and your ways bump against each other, May we trust in you, O oh Lord, with all our hearts. May we lean not on our own understanding. May, may we understand what it means to walk and live in wisdom. We pray this in Jesus' name. And everyone said? Amen. Amen.